I am the contrarian and this is my world. I'm Nikhil Pradhan, the assistant editor of Digit.in. And I'm here on The Contrarian to debate with Rajiv on the filter bubble. Now I believe that the filter bubble exists and it's filtering the internet to give you the information that you want rather than the information that you need. Do you even know you're in a filter bubble? Well, we showed you a few examples of how it works, some very dramatic, some subtle, but if you put it all together, that's the world we live in. Without the education and the knowledge that we are being filtered, we're getting selective, filtered information every single day. Is that good or bad? Well, the guest with me thinks it's very, very destructive. You are one minute to tell us why. First up, the thing is when you are getting a whole lot of information on the internet. Now, information comes in all shapes and forms. You really don't know what the sources are. A lot of the times, they're just links that your friends have shared or which you've come across on a, on a Google search. But the thing is that a lot of times, the algorithms and the stuff that makes up what, how the news is pushed forward to you, it's being made up because of the unconscious decisions that you've made on the internet, links that you've picked, some uh, a part of a debate that you've already chosen. Now, all the answers that you'll start getting will just be based on what stance you've already taken. Not stuff that you probably should know, but the algorithms think that you probably don't need to know. Okay, so but, but, but let, let's, let's get this. You wrote a column, you wrote yeah. an article, I think it was called The Filter Bubble and the Death of Online News. Yeah. What was the trigger for you to write that? You know, uh, when you are in the technology media, you kind of think that you know more stuff than what, you know, the rest of the people know. The, the myth of the technology. Yeah, exactly, and okay. that's, why, that's why you can put yourself on a pedestal and kind of <laughs> tell people, okay, this is the great right. thing to do. So at that point of time, when I, uh, I watched this uh, talk by uh, Ellie Pariser, this guy, on, uh, on TED, where he talked about the filter bubble and how uh, Facebook and search engines were basically filtering the kind of stuff you ultimately get based on uh, algorithms mm -hmm. and other things. Now that really scared me because I have grown up reading newspapers. I mean, I went to journalism school and I went to school and I was always reading newspapers and stuff where I always had the data in front of me. I wanted to read whatever I wanted to read based on what the editor chose to put out there. But out here, what is happening Unconsciously, my decisions in the past of what I had searched and what I had clicked on were ultimately leading me to stories and stuff that at that point in time, I hadn't chosen to read. So in a world that is getting more and more complex, you said we're being bombarded with yeah. more information than any human brain can handle. Right. Isn't this actually good? I mean, suppose this was not done in a clandestine manner. Suppose it was open, out there. There was a particular website that said, this is what we do for you. Yeah. How many places today are making billions of dollars because they say we're customizing to your interest. I mean, doesn't Amazon do it? Absolutely. Uh, doesn't a, a movie club do it? Mm. Uh, they'll give you recommendations. I mean, you're watching TV today. Now, the best software is a filter bubble. Yeah, yeah. It'll see the kind of shows you're watching and it'll tell you the kind of shows that you should be and you don't even know about it. Isn't that great? In a massive way, yes. It, it, is, it is efficient and it makes it makes your life easier. So, you know, my, my, my concern is not so much, I mean, yes, there's a concern that uh, the level of filtering that we may be going through without being aware is a very dangerous situation. Yeah. But tell me, uh, other than, let's say, uh, you know, for instance, if, you're, if you are searching for like-minded people and the filter gives you those like-minded people, but that filter continues to only show you like-minded people even when you don't want yeah. them. Are there more dangers? Definitely. I mean, the entire concept of an echo chamber comes out of there, where you are only talking to people who con con confirm to your beliefs, who believe in what you believe. So, I mean, that's why we are seeing so much polarization in every aspect. I mean, politics has become this massively polarized thing. It's no, it's no longer about just being anti-incumbent or something. You actually have to firmly believe that this one party is right and this other party is wrong. Automated part of the net, which yes. is based on algorithms, yeah. based on profiles, based on cookies, based on your cash, yeah. based on all of those things put together, was force feeding you exactly. with a certain viewpoint, yeah. which was pretty much your own. And if you weren't aware of it, yeah. you would pretty much get 
you know, taken away by it, and you wouldn't know what to do about it. Yeah. Well, it happens again in the world of technology also, which is why there are Apple fanboys mm. who will absolutely and yeah. totally flame anybody who says a word about their yeah. precious iPhone or the next iPad, right? Or the Android army, yeah. which will say, oh my God, you Apple guys are absolutely. <laughs> but slowly, yeah. you start to see that those people start to drift away into their own little groups. Definitely. And there's really not much to yeah. say about everybody loving everybody, yeah. right? So that's you think is the yes. greatest danger. Yes. But that's the part of polarity. That's the part where the awareness that you may be getting polarized without you even knowing it, and that you may not be really outreaching more becomes very profound. Yeah. What else? What other problems do you see? The filter bubble kind of uh, expects you to have implicit trust in the brands that are doing it. Okay, so half of the time you think that, okay, it's convenient, so why, why not? You know, I'm okay with someone giving me restaurant uh, addresses and stuff based in my city. Yeah. But it's always a thing that can be stretched out to, if somebody had a nefarious plan in mind, you know. I mean, you know, that, that does sound a little too much. But <laughs> uh, if, if... No, no, it's good. I mean, yeah. I, I love movie plots. Of <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of future movies that people are so going to write. In, in uh, let's say, again, if I'm, I keep coming back to Facebook because that does tend to be the source of news and information oh, yeah. so that a lot of people... Feed and who and what comes right on top and everything else is, is, is based on some very, very... Exactly. Algorithms. So, uh, Zuckerberg, when Zuckerberg was asked about uh, the filter bubble and why, about the way the algorithms work, he said that, you know, to you, a squirrel dying outside your house may be more important than kids dying in Africa. Correct. You know, browsing the internet is a very passive thing. You, you will discuss stuff later. You will probably form opinions and things. But at that point of time, at the time when you're consuming content, it's a very passive thing. Correct. And when you're passive, you do not want to take decisions. Let's talk about the part that we seem to forget, though, and that is the very nature of the internet. Right. By its very nature, I mean, let's forget that whole, you know, we've had different discussions on things like digital colonization yeah. and that whole polarization yeah. that way. But in whatever entity the internet is, it's still free. Right. And it still is up to you to click on where you want to go yeah. and what you want to read, right? In a world like that where hyperlinks, where every single thing that you read may have eight other things, including a discussion forum right at the bottom that may not agree yeah. with you. Yeah. In a world like that, isn't the filter bubble only a top skimming? Isn't it only like literally just the top surface, the tip of the iceberg? Because right. the minute you move past the filter bubble, the nature of the internet will make sure that you get far more viewpoints right. than just yours. Yes, uh, you know, once you get past the article and you get into the discussions and stuff, then you kind of realize that, okay, you know, other people do disagree. But the fact is that a large part of the filter bubble is not algorithm-based. So it's not just the machines that are doing it. Even when it comes to discussion forums and when people are hashing it out, it's become a level where parts of the internet are just so slanted towards a particular thing that you can't expect anything more. So you're basically saying the filter bubble starts off with the algorithm and is yeah. completed by humans who exactly. basically want to take that and make it the most profound statement yeah. of them yeah. all. Okay, so that's, that's another interesting thing. But let's get down to now, <clears throat> I think, the part that I truly believe. Mm. The filter bubble in itself as it exists uh, is, is more commercial? I mean, is this being done for... What's the main purpose? I mean, I can understand an Amazon or an IMDb yeah. doing it because they actually end up selling you a product. Yeah. Yeah. And it's much better for you to know a product that right. you love and the kind of products you love. So the filter bubble within Amazon shouldn't harm you too much, yeah. right? But a filter bubble within Facebook, what's the real purpose? So uh, the biggest thing for any website now is stickiness. You want that person to stay on your website for as long as possible. And once he leaves, you want him to come back. The thing with that is that even if you know that you are in a filter bubble, I know I'm in a filter bubble. So right? Hasn't that made a big difference? Because sure. my, my final point to you yeah. was really coming to this and you've taken my thunder yeah. away, is that the awareness that the filter bubble exists will come into many people's mind yeah. for the first time. Yeah. There'll be an awareness the next time they're on the net that, oh my God, these guys were right. Mm. They weren't just making up an, another movie script, mm. right? Mm. Once you have that knowledge, then what's the problem? Like I said, uh, consuming content in the internet is a very passive process. But once you know that the, Even if you know, the content that you're actually in yeah. the middle of has been filtered, especially for you, I mean, do, do we truly believe that we are that dumb that we will not do anything about it? I think uh, you may think you want to do a lot of things about it, but you'll probably end up not doing much. 
most of the reading that we do on the internet now is for entertainment purposes. If you are going out to research something, you're writing a thesis, then yes, you will obviously research all you know, aspects of a particular topic. But if you are at work and you have 15 minutes to just you quick, know, free, quick, quick and you're just kind of scrolling through the Facebook, your Facebook timeline, you'll probably click on stories more to do with the new Batman Batmobile that has been leaked and stuff. Un not probably a story on the Kashmir floods because you don't want to read that. And slowly what will happen is that the stories on Kashmir floods kind of gets muted from your timeline. You're not clicking on stories of friends so who probably... Really, really really appeared out. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I think it's about the entire passiveness with the way we consume content. It's no longer an active thing. When we picked up a newspaper, we scanned through the pages, yes, but we would actively choose which part of the newspaper to read, whether I need to jump to the sports section or the uh, comic strips immediately. This is a very passive thing. You just keep clicking, clicking, clicking. All right, great. So I think one of the first things that I'm ever going to be doing on Contrarian is that I'm actually going to say that uh, agree with the fact that a lot of the points that you've made are actually very, very correct. Yes. But there's a main reason for it. <laughs> okay. Because I started the show by playing devil's advocate. Right. Because I truly believe that a filter bubble, one, exists, and yeah. second, it is very dangerous, but it's very important to play both sides mm. of the story, right? Otherwise, we'd be yes. in a filter bubble, too, yes. on the show. Thank you very much, and I truly hope that you do write a few more of those columns. Absolutely. Between your columns and maybe the show, we can get more people to understand Absolutely. that we do live in a bubble, and it's called a filter bubble. So do be aware, I think the entire idea of this show, like I said, was to make you aware that we do live in a filter bubble, that all the content that you're getting has at some level or the other been customized to you because of what you've done in your history. Just going down there and deleting your cookies or getting rid of your cash will do nothing to change that. Is it very dramatic? Maybe not. Can it become terrible? Absolutely, if you're not aware of it. We'll see you next week on The Contrarian. Thank you once again. Thank you.